Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing setting your prices for your new small business. All right, we have been talking about your business numbers, and now we want to talk about your pricing. And if you recall back in our research section, I told you that you needed to really understand what the pricing is in your marketplace. By doing so, you will have a decent idea of what your competition is charging and approximately where you should be priced. I say approximately, as we don't plan to copy your competition. I want you to be better than your competition. And better doesn't mean cheaper than your competition. This is not a race to the bottom. This is a profit game. And when you drive prices down, you sacrifice profit. And now that we have you thinking about your business numbers and you understand what your cost of goods are and your expenses, you can now start to make better informed decisions on how to price correctly. Now, in the beginning, you're gonna have to do a lot of estimating because you don't know yet. So you're gonna need to estimate what you think your potential price is going to be and what you think your expenses are probably going to cost you. Later down the road, you'll have more concrete numbers and you can come back and you can fine tune this process. But you're going to take our calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. We're going to take that formula and we're going to see how we can make it work for you in the early days, even though you're going to have to estimate some of this. Now, let's just say that you're planning on selling a particular service or product for $60 based on your research. Let's kind of go through an example of what you can do. Let's pretend that you're selling a particular service or product for $60 based on your research. And your cost of goods are going to run you about $15 for materials and about $20 for labor. So your total cost of goods are going to be about $35. You also know that your expenses for the year are probably going to run you about $12,000 or around $1,000 a month if you stay lean and mean. So you estimate that you can do about 15 sales a week about 60 sales for the month. So 60 sales times the $60 means that your sales are probably going to be around $3,600. In order to check our pricing, we need to see what our expenses are going to be running us. So we'll take the $1,000 that we think it's going to be, and we're going to divide it by our sales for the month. And we realize that our expenses are going to take about 28% of every dollar we make. That's if we make the amount we're saying we are. But once again, it's a new business. We're going to have to estimate. So this means that $16.80 is going to have to be set aside for your expenses out of every single sale. So if we go back to our calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits, we just check our pricing by plugging in the numbers. So we know our sales are going to be $60 each time. We know our cost of goods are $35. And we know that our expenses are going to be around $16.80 because we have to set that aside. This leaves us $7 in profit. If we do 60 sales a month, times our $7, then we can also expect to have about $420 in profits. Now keep in mind, this may not sound like a lot, but since you're an employee in your business, you are also making that $20 an hour as an employee times those 60 sales as well. So you have both. This profit of 420 is going to be used to pay your taxes, retained earnings, and owner's draw. Remember, retained earnings is money you put back into the business. The good thing is you are priced to make a profit, and that is really important. Great job. Now, like I said, I know this is hard to follow along on an audio program, but don't forget you do have the YouTube channel to be able to show you and walk you through this as well. But the main point that we're trying to get across is that you need to run your numbers. So let's just say that you're kicking around some numbers, trying to decide between $60, 65. You think you can justify the 65. Remember, pricing is about the value people get, the pain point that you solve. So if you are giving great customer service, solving the right pain point, really diving in specifically, maybe you can get 65 for it. But will that raise your profit? Absolutely. Because your cost of goods probably aren't going to change. And when you figure out your total sales, your expenses probably aren't going to run you 28%. That might drop down to 25%. And you're going to find that most of that $5 is going to your bottom line. So now you're really making 10 to $12 by having it priced at 65. Now, the key is you need to ask yourself what has to be true for you to be competitive at the higher price. 
How are you standing out above your competition? Maybe you're going to specialize in something. Your quality is better. The key is to take what you learned about your ideal customer and their pain points and make sure that you're hitting those. People will pay more if they know you are solving their pain. Now, I want to emphasize something. Make sure that if you are working in the business, you are capturing a fair wage for your labor hours. This is really important because you are doing the doing of your business in order to have good, clear cost of goods. You have to be capturing your fair labor because there are labor hours involved in what it is that you do. If you are making products, you need to have labor hours for making the stuff. If you install something, there's labor hours for the installation. The best way to look at it is if there is no you, can the product exist or can the service be performed? If it needs to have you in order for the product to exist or for the service to be done, there are labor hours involved. Now, the rest of the time that you're spending on building and growing the business, your business owner time, for example, those aren't usually going to be in your pricing. That's going to be in the profit side. So it is in the pricing in form of the profit, but the profit is where you're going to get paid for the business time. You need to make sure that the business is profitable first and then worry about how you're going to get paid more as a business owner by increasing those profits. And I will tell you that business owners that do this the correct way in the very beginning by making sure they get paid for their labor hours start off right away being successful because they make sure that the business is profitable and they get paid as a business owner. Then they can focus on, wow, I don't want my business just to make $5. I want my business to make more than that. So by making sure that they're getting paid as the employee, then making sure that the business is profitable, they end up making way more money than somebody who doesn't include themselves as labor in their business, because then they're constantly chasing themselves and they tend to underprice themselves and then struggle with raising their prices to be correct in the first place. Listen, you will not be a pricing pro from the start. You're going to make a lot of mistakes, but by tweaking and adjusting every few months, you're going to start getting better and better at it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't worry about losing people. If you're losing people, you aren't really making any money on them anyways. So what did you really lose? Listen, pricing is an art. You will get better the more you dive into it and you're going to make more money along the way. You need to find the sweet spot. That doesn't mean you continuously raise your prices. It means you raise your prices until you get to where it is the correct pricing for what it is that you do and for what it is that you offer. Now, like I said, I will put some links in the show notes to some of the videos that I have out there on pricing. It's not about you being the cheapest. It's about creating a product or service that solves a problem and conveying to the buyer why they should pay the price that you have set for your product or service. Your competitors can do all the sales they want. You have no idea how profitable they are. You might think that, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. They do all kinds of sales. Yes, but you don't see their books. You don't see their P&L. You don't even know if they're profitable. They could be losing their butt. You need to make sure that your business is profitable. Just keep in mind, people will pay for value. They just want you to solve their problem. Your mission is how do you solve their problem for a very fair price? Not everyone is going to be your potential client. Not everybody should be your client. You need to make sure that you understand who's the right client. Not everyone is going to pay $50 for you to remove the weeds in their yard, at least not until there is a pain point there. Once the HOA starts getting on their butt and setting them $25 fines, all of a sudden that pain is great enough and now they don't have the time or the desire, suddenly that $50 is more than worth it to them. When someone doesn't need something, they will not pay you the price. But when they have the need and you can solve it, they will definitely pay the price. This doesn't mean you go out gouging people. It means that you know your market and know the pain point and you price accordingly. What people care about is getting value for their money. So it's important that you solve the pain point. Know who you're trying to help and make sure that you're very clear on the value that they're getting. I will tell you the number one thing that people wish they would have done in the very beginning is understand their business numbers. And this includes pricing. A lot of people will tell you that they know that they priced too low when they started their business. And then they constantly had to chase themselves to get their prices raised. And they, some of them still struggle with it years later. The more you understand about pricing and pricing correctly, the more profitable you're going to be from the very beginning. Like I said, pricing is an art form. It's a science at the same time. It's very important that you are constantly paying attention to it and making sure that you are fine tuning your pricing. I don't expect you to come out the chute from the very beginning being priced correctly, but I think you can be priced accordingly and then you can tweak it and change as needed. One more thing before I go, make sure that you react to the market. If your costs start to go up, you need to adjust your prices. You just need to explain to your clients what's going on. 
I talked to small business owners all the time that waited way too long before they raised their prices. If it's a temporary bump in a cost, okay, I get holding off. But if it's something that is probably not going to be coming back down, all you're doing is killing your profit by not adjusting your prices. I know it feels weird to be taking advantage of the situation, but that's not what you're doing. The problem is the cost of the materials have gone up. And by you not raising your prices to match those, the only person you're hurting is you. If you normally would pay $20 for something and now it's 25 and you don't change your price, who do you think is swallowing that $5? And if you do this 10 times a week, you're throwing away 50 bucks a week or $2,600 a year. Do you have $2,500 that you can just throw away? I don't think so. Do an annual review of your pricing. Look at it each October and give your regular folks enough heads up that a change is coming in January. Offer specials, offer them buying early at the old pricing, whatever it takes. But most people are expecting price changes. I'm not saying that you take your service from $50 to 75, but if you're bumping it up $5, more than likely, they're not going to go anywhere if you're solving their pain point and they love what it is that you have to offer. Most people aren't going to go away. I deal with a lot of small businesses, not only in my coaching business, but also in my real estate world. And I will tell you, there are a lot of business owners out there that are way underpriced for what it is that they do. All right. I hope you got something out of our pricing conversation today. And I could go on forever about this as well. I love you being able to make some money. But like I said, over on the YouTube channel, there are videos that are going to show you how to do pricing better. And don't be afraid that you're going to continue to tweak it along the way. You're not going to be perfect. No one's expecting you to be. But I promise you, the more information you get as your expenses start to roll in, as your costs start to roll in, and you start to fine tune those numbers, you're going to be able to price even better better. Now we've talked about your business numbers. We've talked about how you get all the way down to that profit and you have a number there, but I've also been telling y'all that profit, some of it's going to go to taxes. So in our next episode, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about taxes because I want to keep you out of trouble. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.